Good evening to those bored enough to watch. Plants vs Zombies is a game known for a lot of things, such as its music, gameplay, art and many more. However, one aspect that I've been somewhat fixated on over the course of the last few weeks is how replayable the game is, particularly with New Game Plus which I will be talking about in this video. Before I move on to that though, I do want to clarify that I won't be discussing any of the mini games or anything of that nature in this video. I think that they're interesting and well created pieces of side content, but for me they were always something to indulge in when I needed a break from the the main game. So, in this video, I want to discuss what I think makes this game endlessly replayable. So, with that said, let's discuss Plants vs Zombies. One of the many things that I think makes this game so appealing is that there's something here for everyone. The game has enough to appeal to a casual audience by not being too complicated and maintaining a level of simplicity. However, the game still has enough strategic elements and other aspects such as stage gimmicks to keep members of other audiences interested in the game. For example, the daytime stages are fairly standard and serve to introduce the game, its structure and its mechanics to the player. The nighttime stages introduce the graves that zombies can come out of while also making the player use a completely different set of plants, teaching that as the game goes on, the have more to work with and will need to be more strategic with what they pick, which as I'll discuss later is an element that the game emphasizes later. The daytime backyard stages introduce the pool and the many zombies that come with this section, which makes the player think more about how they'll protect their plants with more differing types of zombies and threats to deal with. The nighttime backyard stages introduce the fog, meaning you'll have to think of different ways to survive with such a huge limitation to what you can see in the levels until you unlock the blover, in which it then becomes about surviving until you get a decent economy of sun to then be able to thrive through consistently emitting the constantly returning fog from the levels. The roof sections introduce the catapult plants which you'll need to use due to the angled roof. Furthermore, the more challenging zombies to combat are introduced to you, such as the gargantua, the bungee zombies and more. The levels have a sense of progression to them. You start with nothing but as it progresses you slowly garner an infantry of plants to clear the level. On one hand, this can get boring as when you reach that point you won't be doing much besides clicking the sun and occasional coins. However, this game makes you keep a consistent eye on things as you never know what can go wrong or when, particularly towards Towards the end of the game such as on the roof levels. For me, the game is paced very well, particularly with its levels and structure. The game only goes as far as it needs to with nothing more or nothing less. Instead of adding more levels and bloating the stage count, the game gives you a reason to go back and replay it. For me, New Game Plus is easily one of the most fun aspects of the game. It gives you full agency to go and play the game however you want with an added level of challenge. On top of mostly being able to pick whatever plant you want from any section of the game, each level also has more waves which means that more zombies will arrive in each level. Furthermore, more difficult zombies arrive more often. There is a twist to this mode, as Crazy Dave will pick out three random plants for you, leaving you with less slots to pick out the ones that you want. While at times Dave will pick plants that are useful, most of the time he won't, which increases the challenge as his picks can often force you to improvise with what he selected. This means that you may find yourself using a plant that you otherwise wouldn't have, or using an arsenal of plants that you normally wouldn't consider. In normal playthroughs, you may find yourself sometimes picking random plants to fill out the slots, but this mode puts an emphasis on making effective use out of each free slot you're given and only taking what you need. For example, whenever I play this game I find myself picking plants purely as luxury, such as the Doom Shroom which allows me to clear entire waves of zombies quicker. However, with this mode, I find that such a thing isn't possible as I'm forced to pick consistently useful plants and not what I prefer to have at all times. Additionally, the game also forces you to prioritize what zombies you want to deal with based on your assessment of how threatening each one is, particularly on the roof levels. For example, during my playthrough I picked out the basic arsenal of plants and dedicated the rest of my slots to what I deemed useful for taking out the gargantua. Plants vs Zombies is a game that I've had a lot of investment in since I was a child, and even through that I still remain fascinated with how timelessly entertained the game can keep me whenever I play it, regardless of how often it may be. If you haven't already, I would absolutely recommend playing this game, as there's something of interest here for audiences of all sorts. So, there's the video, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all don't mind the shorter video, I just didn't have as much to say as I thought I would. If you want to view the list of games I want to make videos about in the future, then you can always do so through the link in the description. Additionally, if you want to follow me, then my socials will be linked in the description, as well as any afterthoughts or messages I may want to add. With that, I haven't really got much else I want to say, so I'll see you all in my next video. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening.